KE5 NGM here, and today we're going to take a look at the RM Italy LA250 uh, 2 meter amplifier. This is a 250 watt uh, VHF linear amplifier. It will do 200 watts at about 15 watts in, from what the uh, literature says. And this is actually the second one of these that I've had in the past uh, couple of weeks. The first one that I was interested in uh, came from a gentleman on eBay. And I got it, and when we would turn it on and try to transmit on it, for whatever reason, it would just reboot the amplifier. And it would continue to do this. I tried it on two different radios. I tried it on my uh, Yaesu FT991A that uh, you see behind the amplifier there. And just never could get to the bottom of it. So we had talked on the phone a few times and decided uh, that it'd be best to just ship that one back for warranty. Uh, it was purchased from the place uh, on the internet with RM Italy in the name uh, that claims to be here in the in the U.S. And I had a chat with them over the phone to try to see if I could get some kind of warranty repair taken care of. And they gave me a few things to try, uh, but we never could get any um, any affirmative information that it was actually the amplifier from them. I was also in contact with RM Italy in Italy. And I was describing the issues that I was having, the things that I had tried, and they seemed to think that it was something to do with the amplifier itself, and then they led me back to the person that the other gentleman purchased it from. So here's the next one that I've, uh, that I've purchased, and uh, it, it's, let's start with some of the, the positives first. It's a really well-made, uh, durable piece of, uh, equipment here you can tell by the size of it it's really large I know there's some debate online about whether you need the version with the fans or not I figured to go ahead and get the fans just to make sure uh, I didn't know how hot the thing would run but so far it's run very cool and I really don't anticipate those fans ever going on to high speed for any length of time even if you were really just continuously on it and what I really liked about this particular version is the fact that it um, has four of the Mitsubishi transistors in it, and I've researched those, and they're about 70 watts a piece rated. So I was thinking, okay, that's great. That means they probably could handle, the amplifier could handle about 280 watts, not that I would ever run it that high or recommend it. But just as a daily driver around at 125 150 I thought that would be great then maybe for simplex net or something like that turn it up to the full power of 200 watts uh, the diamond x700 that I'm running can only handle 200 watts assuming that that's not uh, PEP or some other kind of uh, weird number but I'm going to assume that it is 250 uh, watts and uh, not necessarily full time because I don't think anything can take that just continuous but uh, Let's say maybe like a 50% uh, duty cycle or less. I think that that would be an ideal expectation. I have been able to get this one to work fairly well, but it's still got some quirks, and that's why I wanted to put together this video. I don't really see anything on YouTube where it goes into the details about how these amplifiers work. Uh, there's just a couple of quick general videos about it, so... Hopefully today we're going to be able to cover some more uh, items on it and get into some details about how the amplifier functions, some of its oddities, and, and things like that. So first things first, let's make sure that everything is in order with the antenna, with the meter, with the coax, all of that good stuff, just to make sure that everything is, is functioning as it should. So I've got the Nano VNA connected to the X700, and uh, let's see if we can get the little arrow to move down here to the dip, and that is 146.0, so pretty close to being right there in the middle of the band. And you can tell that the SWR is 1.0435, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'm going to say that that is a really tuned antenna, and uh, the coax and the meter, if we can take that out of the equation, as it's going to work pretty well. So next, let's get the amplifier hooked up in line and do some tests.
A little hard to get everything in frame here, but I think we'll make it work. So I've got the Yaesu 991A set to uh, 145.42. I've got it set for 5 watts out. I've got it hooked up to about a 5-foot piece of coax so that it's hopefully not resonant to the uh, frequency that we're on here, the 2-meter band. Got the amplifier at the left, the watt bird watt meter in the middle with a 250 watt slug in it, and then the uh, voltage and amp meter that I've got hooked up to my power supply, which is a 60 amp linear. Should be more than enough to um, to run this. So as you can see, when we turn on the amplifier, the fans start up on a on a pretty low um, speed. The boot up sequence comes up on the uh, amplifier. Let's see if we can take a little bit closer look at that. And you can kind of see where um, it's got a pretty pretty good display on there. It's got the power out, the power forward, the SWR, and the temperature. Now, one thing I have noticed on this particular unit is that the input power is highly, highly incorrect on the front of the amplifier. So... We've got five watts in. I can verify that the Yesu is accurate. Um, and let's see if we can zoom in there on the amplifier a little bit. Perfect. So notice that the power input, KE5NGM, testing. Drawing a nice uh, 17 amps over there, but you notice that the amplifier first off thought that it was taking, it was getting 14 watts in. Well... That's fine. Um, I'm not particularly worried about that. But the higher you get, it thinks that you're running a higher wattage on a higher output when you're when you're really not. So let's go up to. This is eight watts, KE5 NGM testing, and here's one of the main issues that I have with the with the amplifier. It's rebooted itself again for no particularly good reason. Um. Let's go up to 15 watts. Sometimes it seems to help if you just own it, you can uh, you can power through the the situation. So let's see what happens there. KE5 NGM testing. Reboots. I just don't see how this this could be uh, that big of an issue. Now, let's let's try it since it seems to be frequency related. Let's go up to 146 uh, 420. And you know what? I bet it works just fine there cuz this is the uh, the thing that I've noticed with it is is very band specific. So let's try it again. This is um, let's start low and go high. KE5 NGM testing. And you can see that that's about 125 watts over there. All right, let's try it um, a little higher wattage. Let's go up to 8 watts at 14642. KE5 NGM testing. Okay, so we had a little over uh, 150 watts out. Amplifier thought that it was 15 watts in. Um, let's go ahead and give it the full 15 watts. It does get more accurate as we go up. So notice on the amplifier, KE5 NGM, wattage is accurate. We switch over to the bird, and that's about uh, 200 watts out. KE5 NGM. All right. So, not too bad. As rated, 146.42, things are great. But let's dial it back down to 145.42. Um, Which, that is a repeater frequency, I forget. But... Here we go with another error. So this time we have a 
power. Uh, with a temp, this is a new error that I haven't uh, that I haven't seen yet. So turn it off, turn it back on. As you can tell, it has really good protection. So let's go back up to one forty six. Four two. KE5 NGM testing. We're good. We're good. Notice that the arrow over the uh, the caution lamp uh, started to flash. That was trying to warn me that I was putting too much power in because I would imagine if uh, you looked at the display, it would have said 16 or so uh, watts was coming in. Uh, I know that this does have, this amplifier, it does have kind of a... Uh, curve to it on its power output so you can see that it really is tuned right there at 145 and 146 but there's hardly any difference between those two on the chart i just can't imagine why it makes such a big difference uh, with the amplifier and i've tried this with different radios i've tried it with my uh, other yesu radio I've tried it with the different power supplies, linear switch mode, swap power supplies for the radio, you name it. And it just kind of, it just acts goofy a lot of the time. Now let's try it on a sideband. Got the 991A set to up a sideband for sideband. And let's flip the little switch here on the front. Down to sideband, and this I was I was really disappointed with this, because I was have expected it not to error out this much. Now I'm about seven eight inches away from the microphone just to be able to to film this correctly, and um, it's it's not going to take much for it to to start to act up. So here we go, KE5 NG. Didn't even get my call sign out, and we get an SWR error. All right. So let's hook up a dummy load and let's see if that for some reason changes anything. And we'll give it a whirl. KE5 NGM. Oh, forgot to reset. Hold on. I guess I really don't need to identify and do a dummy load, and not that my signal would be getting out. So, 146, um, single sideband, just isn't, uh, isn't cutting it. But that, I could, I could almost deal with that if it weren't for the oddities on just regular FM. I, I, I just don't know if it's something in my setup or my particular room here or if it doesn't like my uh, configuration of coax, but uh, something just isn't right. And I don't know if they could tweak the amplifier a little bit more and maybe make some adjustments or if that's just is what it is. I've got another buddy here in town that I've talked to that has, has had two or three of these amplifiers. And he said that they were quirky, but uh, that they were um, functioning devices that you could, that you could use, especially on uh, two meter FM. So I guess the jury is still out on this one. I've got one more day uh, to decide if I can return this one or not. And haven't quite made up my mind. I think I am of the mindset to see if I can, just because it um, it, it doesn't do exactly what it's advertised to to do, which is a disappointment because I'd really much rather have an amplifier that functions. Maybe I might see if I could swap it out with another one and see if this is just an issue of uh, of luck of the draw. Um, I'm beginning to think that that might be the case. So. I'll post a follow-up video to find out what I um, found from the uh, provider, from the vendor. 
and then we'll uh, go from there. So thanks everybody for watching, and uh, I hope that your amplifier travels work out a little bit better than this did. Seven threes, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.